Okay, so I hope everybody can hear this okay. I've had a little trouble with my voice getting over a cold the last couple of days, and I'm still kind of sounding funny. Anyway, basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date this as, uh, t well, today is uh, the 29th of January, 2013. Uh, dating it just for you know, my own sake because I'm gonna not upload this till later. But there's something that I hid in a way unintentionally because I, I just n never said anything about it and kind of got confused a little bit, and then all of a sudden it kind of popped up. But anyway. I know that's not going to make any sense, but, uh, yesterday, um, went to a Who concert, pretty much that's about that, didn't, didn't say anything about it, uh, but that right there, um, and, uh, don't tell anybody uh, I skipped class last night to do this instead. Um, yeah, I, I skipped psychology um, and went to uh, see the hope. Uh, definitely well worth it. Um, definitely. Quadrophenia in its entirety. Basically, just sat there, you know, in amazement the, the entire time. Uh, just incredible. And I, I got some, I got some footage on my phone, but they went well over two hours. Uh, band it open for them. Didn't really know anything about it at first. Uh, Vintage Trouble uh, opened for them. They're uh, a, a band that uh, tried to. Uh, you know, they're funk soul type. You know, uh, trying to you know bring back you know, that, uh, you know, 70s type 5, which were incredible. I actually had seen them on David Letterman, just by chance, actually, um, within the last month or two. I don't remember exactly, because I just, you know, flipping through the, flipping through the channels, saw this band, didn't really know what to make of them, but decided to sit and listen to them. And that the end letter was says it's David uh, uh, says it's uh, Ben's trouble, and didn't really think too much of it. But heard most of the song and was uh, j j wow! I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. And um, uh, it didn't dawn on me till after their set. But I l looked it up on my phone and found out that I actually I actually had heard them before. Uh so that was, that was really cool. Uh they're they're definitely great. But um obviously, you know, the Who just were they were amazing. And I I just you know sat there you you know, I in amazement uh during that whole show. Just absolutely incredible, uh, you know. Despite being uh, the youngest guy there, but uh, doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, um, oh, you know, and that's yeah, you know, it's for this too. Um. Anyway, though. Um. You know, 
uh, found a record store uh, in addition to that and uh, so you know I went and spent another you know ridiculous amount of money the, the trouble with me is every time I go into a record store music store of any kind whether it's you know uh, whether it's vinyl, whether it's CDs, whether it's a combination of the two, I always end up spending around 200 bucks every trip. This was another one. It's, it's a sickness. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that I left that I, st I still wanted. Uh, that's okay. Picked, picked up uh, good stuff, some interesting stuff, and... Some stuff I had to do a little bit of research on, uh, and then one really kooky, interesting piece that, uh, you know, that, I don't know, may raise an eyebrow or two, but we'll see. Uh, okay, um, for some reason or another, I was on a D.O. kick yesterday, and so I'm going up, uh, you know, going to, uh, driving over to Anaheim, listening to a lot of Dio, um, and, uh, picked up Sacred Heart, uh, didn't have this album, uh, great stuff, and, uh, so I'm adding that to, uh, the deal collection and um, just, just incredible stuff. Uh, really like that. Here's a uh, point of entry by Judas Priest, and you know, uh, heading out to the highway course is basically a mainstay on. VH1 Classic, and it's been that way for years. Uh, pretty much, I'll get into anything Judas Priest, except for Turbo. Um, first heard uh, Turbo Lover in uh, in a video game years ago. Thought it, thought it was odd because I didn't I didn't know who they were at the time. Uh, I just like, you know, anything else by them, you know, yeah, I've, uh, I've got, you know, stuff by Ripper and, you know, cool, 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 uh, Turbo, not so much. Um, okay, this is one I should have had in the collection. Uh, a long time ago, and um, now I finally got it. Rainbow on stage, definitely, definitely uh, needed to have this. And uh, yeah, they had a lot of rainbow. Uh, Left stuff that uh, that I wanted, but again, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I think most of us can agree that you know we go, we can never really grab everything that we want, you know, when we when we see it the first time, because you know, there's always there's always something that you're leaving. Um, that was a, that's the case with uh, with me. This one, I, uh, again, you know, uh, familiar to pretty much everybody, uh, paid probably more than I should have, but, um, you know, based on the, the, the you know, I did a quick eBay search in the store, and, you know, they, the price fit in 
you know, the asking what they were asking for fit in with what bids were on it. Um, but uh, yeah, one one that I, one that I wanted to that, that I weren't at. Uh, Garage days re revisited. Um, in really nice shape. So uh, that having been said, you know, price doesn't really hurt as much because of uh, because of that because the the condition is just absolutely incredible. I don't think uh, everyone played. And uh, so this is uh, so this is a nice addition to uh, the Metallica collection. Uh, there will be more Metallica on the way uh, in the form of uh, autograph stuff. Um, been getting uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of autograph stuff. That's one. That's one thing that uh, uh, my dad and I have been into, and uh, you know, he, you know, something that he just seems to do. Um, you know, uh, not on a regular basis, but he'll, you know, do a random search for autographs and, and find stuff. Uh, that, that's something he's always liked to do. You know, starting with, you know, of course we started with sports, you know, got our favorite sports teams and favorite players from, you know, basically from uh, the 60s onward. Uh, and then it started getting into, into music. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit. Now, this one, uh, didn't know anything about it, but um, knew who the guy was, of course. And so I just I saw it and I grabbed it. Um, but probably I'll go back and do some research on it. But if anybody's got anything that they can um, tell me about, it. it's a interview picture disc with Bruce Dickinson. Uh, it says here from 1986, it's an uh, English import, and uh, um, there, and there, so if anybody's got any from more information that uh, you'd like to share it with me, that'd be appreciated. Uh, you know, I basically uh, have pictures just as a collection. Um, don't really play them because I've had really bad experiences with them getting to play on my turntable uh, and probably, probably because of the turntable that I've got but uh, doesn't really you know uh, they don't really play well uh, and it doesn't seem I've because I've, I've played two versions on picture just the same album uh, a while back, well, probably about a year ago now, and uh, they both didn't play. One was a, uh, uh, it well, well, the album was uh, Live and Dead uh, by Slayer. Uh, I played the Metal Blade reissue, uh, and got like halfway through. I think it was Black Magic, which is the the first song on on one of the sides and you know just quit uh wouldn't play and the same thing happened to uh the 
picture this version from the mid 80s. It was A4, A5, something like that when the album came out. Um, so, anyway, I don't, I don't know. Uh, probably just need to use a different turntable. Um, okay, this is Rough Cut Wants You. And, uh, so, adding, adding this to the collection, uh, heard of them before, uh, can't think of any songs of them, but I didn't know at the moment, but, uh, yeah, recognize the name, interesting cover, so, it's mine. Um, here's a band that I wanted to get in my collection for a uh, long time. Um, but didn't want to pay, you know, buku high prices on uh, on the internet. Um, Denim and Leather by Saxon. A uh, lot of Saxon. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I wanted that, again, I left. Uh, but this one, you know, it's a good start. Um, this one was... Uh, Another in interesting find, and uh, I picked it up again because of, of name recognition, but know very little about this. And again, if anybody wants to, uh, I, I can do the uh, you know, you can find stuff on it, but uh, if anybody's got any more insight, um, this is uh. Head Tactics by Samson. This is, of course, uh, Bruce Dickinson's band before Iron Man. And uh, saw it, uh, you know, knew what it was as far as, as band and everything. And uh, yeah, grabbed it. Um, so, interesting though. Uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, just look at the artwork, I'm, I'm lost, never mind. Um, okay, um, Wasp Sleeping in the Fire, uh, promo, uh, probably one of the only glam type bands that I actually, uh, like, and, uh, I, I can admit that, um, had the uh, I want to be somebody picture just that I, I uh, that I left. They wanted a little bit too much, and I was willing to pay for it. But uh, yeah, adding uh, adding this 12 inch, and I've, I've now got I don't know probably five. I think it's probably the fifth uh, wasp piece. Um, okay, I got a couple more here, so I'm almost done. Um, this is basically the only release by a Canadian indie rock group, and it's uh, uh, you know, did some research on it, and uh, you know, um. So, yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, playing this. This is rather interesting. Um, little pickup. Um, interesting picture right there. And so that, that's, why, uh, that's why I grabbed it. Um, and then the last, uh, this last one is rather um, interesting. Um, Basically, to add to a rather weird um, section of my collection, uh, Timothy Leary, this time around you can be anyone. Uh, this is uh, originally released in 1970. 
uh, this is a 2004 reissue and uh, you know adding that to a very weird section uh, that uh, includes an album by Jim Jones and uh, I've, I've mentioned that album before but I don't believe I've ever shown it but um, yeah this is adding to um, weird uh, you know weirder section um, and uh, live and let live is a uh, jam session Stephen Stills, John Sebastian, Buddy Miles, Jimi Hendrix. Um, and so, yeah, couldn't the the coolness factor to this? I just I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. Okay, um, so there you have it, and those are uh, the latest records and a little something about the. Uh, who concert? Um, I'm gonna stick this with Quadrophenia, and I'm probably that's actually probably a pretty good idea to start start doing. I'm gonna grab my old ticket stubs and and put them in put them in albums. Uh, I've kept a good portion of them um, from the uh, concerts that I've, I've gone to. So anyway, thank you so much, everybody.